is to prove the convergence of C. Okay, so I begin with the problem we discussed before. Okay, we 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 have some tricks such like this series. Okay, this is a typical series. I cannot use a compression test directly to prove its convergence. Uh, the reason is the, the, the sign of the numerator could be negative, could be positive. Okay, so we cannot, compression test only can be used for, for series with positive terms, non negative terms. So remember, every test, okay, there was an assumption there, okay. So you cannot just use that theorem without understanding the assumptions. Like the integral test, you have to make sure all the terms are, 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 are decreasing right to zero. Then you figure out the function for that series. Then you look at the integral. So uh, there is always assumption. And for this one, I I I go through all, you know all the tests we have learned. No of them can be used to prove its convergence. So you have to you have to have some play some tricks to prove. To do that, right? And uh, the trick is uh, sine n is going to be, uh, this could be negative, could be positive, right? So it can be like that plus one minus one. Well, this is a very simple trick we use there every day. <laughs> but that term is going to be non negative, right? Okay? So, so the series, okay, this series will be the subtraction of two series become, okay? So this is going to be sine n plus one over n squared minus one over n squared. But this, if each of them converge, then the difference is converging, okay? So we have the theorem here says that this is going to be okay I know this is a convergent by the P series test right so the theorem says that if if you have a two six series okay each of them is convergent then then the difference of the sum okay will be the new series and that's also convergent okay now this is a convergent. You can uh, use the comparison test. Why? Because now every term is not negative. Okay, this is a argument, right? Now you can find the comparison test. So the reason is sine n plus one over n squared is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to two over n squared. Okay, then you can we can apply just because every term is non negative. We can apply the uh, uh, comparison test to, to show that. Okay, this implies okay, it's convergent. Okay, okay, by the yeah, this is true by the by the comparison test. Okay, when I say finite, means it's convergent. So this is the idea. <clears throat> uh, is there any other better way to do that? It's too complicated by doing that. How do I know that so one, one minus one is going to be zero? Well, everybody knows one minus one is going to be zero, right? But the question, how do you apply this trick to the problem, right? All right, so we're going to prove, uh, we're going to, uh, uh, Prove the following theorem. The theorem says that if you have a sequence, a series, and this series is n, maybe be negative, maybe positive. If this one is finite, okay, then I cannot say that one is finite. I can only say that this is a convergent. Okay. F. If the series, all the terms are not negative, then it only has two possibilities. One is 
it's convergent to a finite number or it's, con it's convergent to a infinite. So that's why this means convergent. Okay, this is equivalent to the convergent. Okay, I have to put a note here, otherwise, you know, sometimes oh, I have to say convergent, you know, sometimes it's finite. Okay, if, yeah, if the series is not negative, then, uh, then this is a finite, uh, okay, this is a finite that really means it is convergent, okay? Because the series only has, uh, so only has a uh, following, uh, yeah, this, yeah, then, okay? This only have a two cases, either fine, infinite or finite. Okay, there is, it's, you know, there are some series, right? The limit doesn't exist, mm -hmm. but this one's mm -hmm. a limit. Always exists if the general has said, either goes to infinite or finite. Okay, because every time you add the one positive terms, it gets better, getting larger and larger, but maybe there's upper bar. So, so, so the series, okay, is either, it's a zero, the sum of the, the, the series, right? The series is going to be the limit of the partial sums. The partial sums is either finite or infinite. Right, if it's finite, then we say it's convergent. So for, for a series with the non-negative terms, uh, sometimes we just simply say it's, it's less than infinite, okay? So it really means it's convergent. All right, now why that term is true? If the if a true value of A is gonna be non-negative, if that is a, a why this is a true, okay? Well, you can you can do that. You can do the following, okay? It's the same idea we use that. So a n, right? And and if the absolute value of a n is going finite, so a n can be written in the form, okay, written in the form, uh, I think we can write it in this one. Okay, it's the same idea. Okay, plus minus. And you can show that uh, this is a non-negative. Okay, why? If n is negative, it's a zero. If n is positive, the double it. That's no negative, right? And it's identity. So the same idea. Uh, so you see, you can apply. You can apply a compression test for this. Why? Okay. Why this is? Because this n plus a n is greater than zero, right? But this is less than, right? <laughs> okay then you can apply the comparison test. So you get, okay, so it's convergent. Of course, that is convergent too. We already know that, right? So this plus this, okay? You implies this can be Okay, minus, okay, is convergent. You cannot say it's fine, but it could be negative. The first one can be smaller than the second one. Okay. Yeah, we do, we, we have a theorem, we have a, if, uh, if each series convergent, then the linear combination of, uh, of, uh, of all the terms get, gives a new series, it's also convergent. Yeah, I have to recall it because we keep using that. Recall that, okay? We have to recall that. So if uh, if if this series B and C and this two series is convergent, okay? Then for any numbers. A and B, 
Okay. Oh, lambda and t alpha and beta does not. Let's use the alpha method. Okay. And this series, this new series, alpha bn plus beta cn is convergent. Okay. And not only convergent, they can be given by and equal to equals okay yeah that's logic so we are applying this this you can find out this thing in the book okay the proof is just partial sum yeah limit the question so that's what happens with uh, yeah we use that to prove the above one you see we i express n as the difference of those two terms right then each of them i give you each yeah so you have a two series but two series here are all convergent then combine them together just n it's also convergent okay. that is a that is a proof we quote that theorem okay all right so now we're going to use that so if we if us if if the series okay the nth term sometimes positive sometimes negative but if it's a pursuit of value of the nth term okay, it gives you a series which is convergent then it's convergent okay so here uh so so let's take a look at the example right sine n over n square so this is the nth term be negative to be positive you cannot apply the compression test to do the problem but you can see the you can see the this right now you can apply the compression test to this problem you cannot apply the compression test to the original problem, origin series right otherwise you're not going to get credits enough all the credits uh, even you prove it's convergent okay but that's not a real proof okay when you when you quote some test you have to make sure the series satisfies the conditions given the test that's it you have to claim that okay composite test can be only applied to the series with positive or non-negative terms. All right, now this one has positive or non-negative terms. Okay, and this series convergent or not? Well, this series, this is my n, right? Or bn doesn't matter. Okay, so this bn is is non-negative, right? It's less than or equal to one of n square. So now you compare compare it with another simpler series okay and this one is convergent okay you have to say that by the by the p series test okay uh, was p equals two okay p is greater than one right then this two implies Okay, the first one is a condition, right? Yeah, this condition meet satisfy the the comparison test condition condition for the comparison. Test. So this implies this is a convergent. Why? By the comparison test. That's now that's not enough here. This only proves. The series of the absolute value of the nth term is going to be convergent, right? Then you have to say that after you remove the absolute very symbol, right? This is a convergent. Okay. Uh, so you don't need to repeat the same idea and over and over again. Okay. Otherwise, you have to. I have to. You know, I had to remember the the 
the first problem I did it, right? I add the one minus one, right? But you can also add the sine absolute value of sine n minus absolute value of sine n. Okay, yeah. But you can prove that repeatedly using the ideas for the theorem. Okay, the theorem says that the, the, the series of the absolute value of n term is convergent, then, then the original series is convergent. Okay, so that convergence is it's very strong. Okay, even you remove the negative sign, it's still convergent. We call the absolutely convergent. Okay, uh, definition. Okay, a series is is absolutely convergent if if this is a convergent. And I know this convergent implies a series convergent. So absolute convergent definitely is convergent. Just after you remove the the negative sign is still converging. It's much a strong convergence. Okay. Is there any series which is converging but not absolute conversion? Yeah, because you see this implies this is a convergent always. Okay. Right? We just proved that by the theorem. By the above theorem, okay. So absolute convergence is always convergent. That's not converse is not true. So here's the example. This is a good example. Sigma. Okay. This series is convergent. We know that. Why? By this alternative series. Right, this alternative series, and it's convergent because one of n decreases to zero in the positive. By the alternative series test, it's convergent. But is it absolute convergent? No. After you remove the negative sign, it will be divergent because it's common in the series. Okay, right. so let me write down the details. Okay, so Bn equals one of n. It's positive, decrease to zero. Okay, so so in this in price is convergent by the alternating series test. Okay, you have to say that by what test, and you uh, we verify the assumptions using. Uh, in the uh, alternative series test. All right. Then you look at the absolute value of it each time, which is just one of n. And this is a divergent. You can say by the p series test, p equals what? Okay, we already proved that. It is divergent. Okay, was p equals one. You don't need to uh, uh, cook the detail of the p series test. So that's good enough. Okay. Right. Okay. So. Uh, such convergence, we call it, yeah, we, you know, some series is a weakly convergent in this sense, right? It's not a strong convergent. Uh, in this book, they're called conditional convergence, okay? Uh, they're not, yeah, I use that name. Okay. Absolute convergence and conditional convergence. Because we already use absolute convergence, this terminology, then we use a condition, okay? And, yeah, this is a uh, under certain conditions convergent. 
Yeah, when we admit the students, we also say, you are conditionally admitted to IUQI. <laughs> Sometimes, especially for international students, yeah, they, are, they have to provide some additional information, but then we want them to come and then just send letters first. And if you can provide a following document, then better. And then also the master student too. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was admitted to State University of New York Stony Brook, but I only got a, a telegram saying that you are conditionally admit if you send the application form to us because the application form was uh, lost. Okay. But there's three recommendation letters received. That's why they wanted. Yeah. So, uh, so let's do the. Uh, Next problem, okay, and uh, so I'm going to look at Now, so look at this. Okay. I think this will be a pseudo convergence. And not only just convergence, it's a pseudo convergence. Even you drop the negative sign. The harmonic series is divergent, right? But then we put an alternate sign in front of each term. Then we make it a convergent. But this one, okay, without a negative sign, it's, it will be convergent. Later on, we can even find the value of this. So right now, we can, okay, you can, I can even get the exact value of this. Okay. It's not a geometric series because there's n in the denominator. Okay, n in the denominator. In, in section 11, we are able to find out the sum of this. Okay. So it's a e not two. To check the convergence for this series, you have two options. One, you can use an alternative series test to prove it. Okay, right? This ends term clearly. Uh, so this is uh, going to be, yeah, this is going to be written in the form like that. Okay, and the Vn is going to be 1 over n times 2n, and the clearly it's positive, decreasing to zero. It's obvious. So if it's obvious, you don't need to check whether the derivative is positive or negative, right? Yeah, this is obvious because the numerator is always constant. So you can put the word obvious to everybody. Okay, obvious. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. Then by the by by the uh, limited compression test, then this series is convergent by the alternating series test. Okay. That. But you can also work out this problem in a different way. Instead of look at the, I look at the corresponding uh, series. Okay, I w I I get rid of the negative sign. Okay, I have a suitable value term, and then I look at this series. I think this series is going to be convergent. The reason is this is my n, okay? So n, or I can still use a bn, okay? It's because the same bn, okay? All right, so it's going to be n times to the n. Clearly, it's going to be less than this, right? And this can be written that, okay? It's obvious, right? So that means I know this is a convergent. Why? Convergent by the geometric series. Okay. The geometric series, uh, I can say test. Okay. And the i is going to be one half, which is less than one. Less than one. So this is convergent. The geometric series, only for only if I, the absolute value i is a uh, 
is a uh, yeah either actually is positive between you and them, right? Absolute value well, I is less than less than one. Then it's convergent. All right. Then you um, then you get because this is always non negative, right? Then you implies this is a convergent. Okay. Okay. And the why? By the comparison test. You see that everything, every statement you can guarantee by some test still. All right. All right. So now you prove that this series is a through convergent. In other words, this is is absolute convergent. Of course, it's convergent by the theorem. The second method actually you prove more than what I did. I just wanted to check, <laughs> but now you can to conclude that it is absolute convergent. Uh, you give me more than what I need. That's okay. Okay. Right? Absolute convergence means that's of course convergence guaranteed by the theorem. Of course, it's convergent. Okay. Now, why do we want to study absolute convergent? And uh, we we're going to deal with some series. Sometimes it's not positive. Okay, it's not alternative series. Okay, we still want to look at convergence, right? But, okay. Now we are going to uh, introduce two important tests. One is called ratio test. Okay, the so ratio test is for an arbitrary series. Here, I do not assume a n is positive or negative. Okay, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I put a note that here and can change the signs. Okay, could be negative, could be positive. All right, so now we 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 assume that the limit as n approaches infinity of a suit of our n plus one over n, this is L. Okay, so this is a uh, L, could be finite, could be infinite. Anyway, it exists. L could be, but clearly it's positive or zero, right? So this could be, L could be, uh, L could be greater than zero and less than infinity, okay? So we conclude that, if L is less than one, then 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 this is a convergent. Okay, of course this so the series is a through convergent, right? So this is a strong. In other words, the series is absolute convergent. I.e., this is a is absolutely convergent. Okay. And then what happens if L is greater than one? If L is greater than one, then one can show that. The limit of n approaching infinity of a pseudo like this is going to be infinite. Right. What does that mean? This is the infinite. Implies the limit either doesn't exist or cannot be zero. Right? So that means by the by the test for divergence, it's di divergent. 
okay? Then this series is divergent. Why it's divergent? By the test for instance test by divergent. So we, so limit L, if L equals one is inconclusive, I cannot use it in any sense. I don't have a time to give a proof, but I will prove another one. That was a called load test. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this problem again. Negative n minus one, one. Okay, this is a n times two to the n. Okay. Now, when you see an alternating series, does not mean you have to use alternating series test to, to prove its convergence or that. Okay. Sometimes even divergent, you cannot use alternating series. Okay. So look at this. Okay. Look at this, right? This is A. Maybe I can prove it's absolute convergent. Okay, how do I do that? I look at this. Okay, the ratio test is this series compared with himself, self, okay? Just compare with the past, <laughs> next year compared with previous year, okay? And the comparison test is compared with another person, okay? At the same time, like you have two series, like a two person, right? Okay, and they compare with each other. That's so called comparison test, limit comparison. But this one, it's called self comparison. Okay, just pair, uh, compare was the last year. Okay, so let's take a look at so negative sign is gone. I don't need to worry about that. Okay. Then you flip it over. And after simplifying, you get this. Okay. Why? Because two to the end is gone. End of end plus one cannot be canceled. But the limit of the first part is one as n approaches infinity, that's my L. Great, L is good, L is less than one, three. L is less than one, okay? Then we conclude that, uh, that's one half, right? We conclude that this one is absolutely convergent, by the ratio test. Okay. We prove the ratio test using uh, the comparison test actually. Okay. I only can prove, if I have time, I only prove the one of the tests. Uh, and we're also going to study the road test. Okay. All right, so now let's take a look at the next problem. It's not as, you know, it could be the series was positive terms, okay? So if I have a two to the n, n factorial. If I start from, yeah, this is a finite, I can tell you, okay? It is not only finite. This is actually is going to be E squared minus one. <laughs> We're going to learn that later, okay? It's very steady now. Okay. So we want to see whether, yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, it's fine. Convergent to E squared minus one. Okay, I want to check whether it's converted or not. Anyway, uh, 
a basu convergent is and the convergent it's the same because the, all the terms are positive. So this is my end, right? But in the in the original statement, then we have to use apples so right here. So it's going to be n plus one factorial. It's two to the n plus one, two to the n n factorial. Uh, be careful when you simplify. Okay. So you get two to the n plus one n plus one factorial and turn this upside down n factorial two to the n. So two to the n divided by two to the n just two. N factorial is n plus n factorial is n n plus one factorial n plus one n factorial. So n factorial is cancelled out. And then clearly this approach is zero, which is l. L is less than one, right? Okay. So that implies this series is convergent. Very, yeah. Okay. By the ratio test. Okay. <coughs> Now, can you use a compulsion test to prove? I think you can. Actually, the idea is coming from the proof for the ratio test. And uh, yeah, this is a, it's, but you have to be very good in math to, in order to get up bond for, for this, uh, for this AN. Okay, N factor it because if n is sufficient large, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n. 2 times 2 times 2 all the way to 2, right? Yeah. And uh, you have to get a very simple up bar if you want to use some button. That's not uh, easy to do that. Well, it's not easy. Maybe it's easy, OK? <laughs> So let's look at this part. This part is okay. We don't want it, right? So this is just two. Okay. How about the rest of it? Rest of them actually, you look at vertically, getting smaller and smaller. Two of the three is larger than two of the four. It's larger than two of five, right? So what you do is this is a two, like a two over three, two over four, two over five, all the way to, to the end. All of the term are smaller than the previous term. So what you do is less than two over three, two over three, two over three, two over three. Okay? How many terms here? You have n minus two terms. Yeah, so it's gonna be two times two over three n minus two terms. That's your BN. And this is a geometry series. Okay? This is a geometry series. So comparison test, it's not, uh, if it's not, it works for many series, but not I mean you are able to find a simple VA. That requires a, a very good math, math uh, background, okay? Just like that, how do you know, you know, can be composed in this way and you get upper bound, right? Yeah, so I just, I stop here to this problem, I'm not gonna continue. Once you can find a simple, uh, 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 a series like that for the upper bound, then you can show that this is convergent. Okay. Uh, but ratio test, well, Greg, you get some experience, but the ratio test is not working for this series. Okay, and uh, even n square. Okay, you prove this conversion using p series or using integral test, but you cannot use the ratio test to prove this conversion. Why you cannot use the ratio test? This is n, so n plus one over n, right? It's going to be one over n plus one square, one over n square, and then after simplifying, okay, and this is going to be it's converging to one, which is L. 
right? If the alien is wet, you are not able to prove its conversion to divergence, okay? Inconclusive by the ratio test, okay? We cannot apply the ratio test to prove its conversion. We cannot, right? Yes, to prove the convergence of this series. But this is convergent, this series is We have to prove that in the P series test, or just directly apply the integral test okay, to this problem. Okay, so I have to say that <laughs> some students, after their practice using measure test, they not use this method for all the problems. No. Yeah. Okay. Like, if unless you get the limit, you know, if the limit is one, then inconclusive using the limit. Okay. All right, so the next one is called the nth term, nth root test. So nth root test is still considered an arbitrary a series. Okay. We assume that we assume that the limit as n approaches infinity is the nth row. This one is going to be up. Okay. So it's a finite. Okay. R could be between zero and the infinity. Okay. Part of infinity. Could be zero, could be infinity. It's very similar argument, a very similar statement. So if R is less than one, then this series is convergent. So that means the original series is upper three convergent. Okay. Now if i is greater than one, it's divergent. Okay. If i is greater than one, then this limit. Okay. So the origin is, so the nth term does not put you zero. So then the original series is divergent, okay? It's divergent by the, by, by, by as the nth term test for divergent because the nth term does not approach zero. Okay, when I call zero, I mean I call when it's inconclusive. Okay, but in order to using this alternating series, we have to, uh, using this n zero test, we have to use an important fact: the limit of n slot of n is going to be one. Okay, why this is true? Okay, why this is true? And I think we did that before. But we can, I can show you why this here. Let's redo the problem. Okay. Think about that, right? Uh, we can uh, end to the, yeah, let, let me sketch the argument. Okay. So, n slot of n is n to the one of n, right? It's going to e to the natural log n to the one of n, right? That's going to be e to the n natural log of n. And I think this approach is zero. Why? Natural log n grew slower than n, right? Or you can apply look at this rule for the corresponding function. So this approach is zero. So this approach e to zero, which is one. Okay, as n approaches infinity, that's the idea. But so we use that. Then you take a look at the following problem. Okay. Now, all right. How do you prove that this is convergent or divergent? 
can you use a racial test? I think you can. Can you use a road test? We can do that, okay? Or other tests. Other tests, probably you can. Integral test is more complicated. I think you can use the integral test. You can even use a compression test if you want, but then you have to be careful about the compression test. Uh, so, uh, so let's, yeah, this is N. I'm going to use ratio test. So that's going to be N plus one over E to the N plus one, N over E to the N. So I'm going to simplify it. Okay. So I get, The limit is going to be 1 over e, which is l, l less than 1. Good. So, so that implies that in, yeah, this implies this is convergent, OK? By the ratio test. Yeah, today we have a, have a tech quiz. That's the reason I don't want to prove the ratio test. But next class, maybe I spend a few minutes to prove the ratio test. Okay. All right, so use the ratio test, you can show this is convergent. But how about the end row test? That's the first test, right? Second, you look at this. Uh, this is going to be e to the negative, all right? Uh, okay, so you will get n slot of n and divided by e. And clearly, this approach is 1 over e, right, as n approaches infinity. This is l, it's still less than 1. Then you conclude that this is convergent by n slot test. Okay, so if you can use the insular test to prove its convergence, you can also use the ratio test to prove its convergence. Very few examples, you can only use one of the method to prove the ratio, to prove its convergence. When you see a factory, n factory, you cannot use the low test, okay? You have to use a ratio test. Okay, but as a other problems, you can probably just use an answer row test. Yeah, for example, if you see if you see this, <clears throat> right? If you see n factor here, and maybe I have other terms, right? In this case. You cannot use row test because it's impossible to figure out this. Okay, we don't know. We only know the nth row of n approaches one. Okay, so we don't know. You cannot use a we cannot use a row test to solve problem. So only method you can use is use a ratio test. Okay, use a ratio test, then you can simplify. Okay, then it approaches zero, which is L. L is less than one. Then that. Okay. Then it is a uh, yeah. So this series is convergent. Okay, and the what by the ratio test. Okay, can you prove that using other tests? Yes, of course. That's not necessary. That's not a unique method, but but other methods maybe requires more uh, more knowledge in mathematics. Okay. Yeah, as I said, that you can always n factor, right? N factor is going to be one times two times three all the way to a. Right. So clearly. 
I can prove that it's a PCR test, right? Or comparison. Okay, I can just only consider the last two terms. Okay, then you know this series converge. Okay, so here n should be greater than or equal to two. Okay, yeah, otherwise it does not make sense. Okay, so this series is converging. Okay, this is a BN. Okay. And now I know sigma of Bn is convergent. Okay, then it implies this is a convergent. Okay, n starts from two, but it n can start from one. Okay, this is the by the comparison test. All right, uh, that's all for today's class. We uh, continue to go over all the problems later.